Now, even though we are in the gambling slash uh, DJ niche, so to speak, I gotta give credit where creditors do. There are some that don't want to give up, right? So there are a few projects between quotation marks out there that really don't want to throw in the towel and they don't want to, you know, say that, okay, we tried our best, we're done, even though they most probably wouldn't have. Now, Cairo is still adding stuff to their products. The first thing they launched was something like an ROI DAP that didn't work out so well. They had a, I think there was a hack at some point and then they restarted the whole thing. And now today I'm going to be discussing a sub product of whatever they have in store and just give a very objective overview as I normally do. So just to emphasize of what I just said, since we are in the degen slash high risk niche, nothing is more enticing than entering a so-called ROI DAP, a miner, or something of a static miner, or yeah, I mean, it's something in between the two. Now, I'm gonna talk about something called the farm pot. So it's again, one of the product that they have launched, but this one doesn't actually apply on a stable coin or a blue chip asset so it's not bnb or busd usdc that you enter with but you actually enter with their native asset so when they did relaunch their new native asset is called caf and that token is being used in most of the products they have now let's quickly jump into what the farm pot is about all right right so Essentially speaking, similar to what I just said in regards to uh, a static miner that most probably you'd be using, entering with BUSD, BMB, USDC, so whatever you use to enter with in several of these DGEN apps. So this one you enter with the native asset, CAF, and then when you are in the farm pot, you are promised 1% a day, all right? In CAF, of course. So the contract is being replenished in the native asset so people have to buy the asset if they don't own it already and if they do they just enter the contract and they are paid in it so most probably supply and demand will dictate how much supply will there be in the farm pot but i'm gonna get into this soon so that one percent today comes with a few rules and regulations <laughs> so I, I like to always say that because you always have to abide by a few things when people tweak in mechanics when it comes to these static yield farms okay so the first thing you should understand is that you are allowed a max payout of 3.65 times your initial and this comes with a non-compound option meaning whatever you enter with you're gonna take times 0.65 x that amount but keep in mind you're, lo you're losing not losing but you are not entitled to claim back your initial, so to speak. So you only take in the 3.65x at the end of the day. So no compounding, you can just withdraw. And if you all, if you actually get people and if you refer other people to join under you and with you, uh, then the referral rewards that you're going to be getting, and those are actually detailed in the white paper. So I suggest you to check all of the numbers. So whatever you get will actually speed up your max payout process. They're not added on top of your deposit. They're just rewards given to you and they will add up on your max payout uh, acceleration process. All right. Keep that in mind. So and again, if you actually read that, ma uh, if you actually reach that max payout at some point in time, if the contract keeps running. But again, this is different, like I said, because it's enable through the native asset which is always going to be traded so at some point you will most probably reach that max payout all right but the value of the token is something different and then if you want to keep earning you have to double your initial and keep in mind that doubling the initial is not in the usd value of the token but in the amount of token itself so if you enter with 1000 caf the first time around the next time you have to put in 2k so if the value decreases by 50%, for example, then you're entering within the same dollar value, just more tokens, all right? And the taxes are pretty straightforward. The 15% that you enter with upon depositing is gonna be redistributed uh, in a static manner 
to referral uh, in, in refer rewards to whoever you know incurs them and the withdrawal tax of 10% is actually gonna be put back into the smart contract of the farm pot meaning uh, they're gonna remain so you get 90% when you withdraw of the amount so if it's let's say 100 CAF you're gonna get 90% of this and 10% will stay in now it's very important to note that when you actually want to invest in something that has been going for a while now and specifically a sub product of a bigger project you need to understand the full picture you need to understand what drives price action behind the main asset because that's what you're going to be buying to entering the farm pot and i really suggest you to go to the white paper and check what are these things that i'm just discussing because there are so many things and again if you want to know learn more about the farm pot itself there are a bit few excessive numbers that you can get but this is the overview that i just showed you right remember this is high risk but also high reward it's, it's always the case but it's in the upper echelon of the dgen stuff that you might enter because not only you are entering with a native asset that has the uh, potential to fall in uh, in value pretty rapidly if there was ever a bank run but you're also entering a miner, which is another situation. So there are pros and cons to entering a miner with a BUSD value where people will take money from this contract and when that runs out, you're out versus, you know, uh, interacting with a native asset with a liquidity pool that has the potential to fall in value. But if these guys keep building, if these guys keep adding products, so hopefully that will drive more demand and hopefully that if everything comes together price action will move sideways at best or at worst so to speak so just mentioning a few highlights of these other products that these guys have so let's pull them up real quick so there are things that are coming and there are things that are already in place so i know for a fact that cairo swap for example is there cairo swap would actually burn caf tokens if you you know interact with it and with any AMM, if you actually know how this works, so there's a small trading fee embedded. And whenever you make a trade, the native asset of that AMM would most probably be burned. So buying and burning is a process that would help the CAF token, you know, appreciate over time. Of course, if demand keeps up. All right. So there's that. The Cairo pad is also there. The Cairo pad requires you to buy CAF, lock it for a certain amount of period, and then you can transact your ICO on the Cairo pad. There's the casino that most probably utilizes the native asset to also interact with the games. Now, I know that the Cairo bank is not launched yet, and the Cairo lending part, I think, is also not out. So these things will also utilize CAF. Now, Cairo Bank is something that will most likely be similar, to, be similar to Libero Bank, which was actually a great hit back in the day, but on a rebase token, that's why it didn't last. So this one isn't, so hopefully it will do better. So again, you lock up your assets to earn a certain amount of dividends. That's how these things usually work. Cairo Lending, again, will most probably be you interacting and using CAF as collateral to borrow other native assets and if that's the case, then it would be amazing, honestly, because then you're going to actually buy uh, substantial amount of CAF. But there's also a big risk because those are not blue, chips ass uh, blue chip assets. So the value might actually uh, spiral down a bit quicker. So there's also that risk over there to use something like CAF as collateral. And the Cairo copy trading NFT, which is, I think, already out, if I'm not mistaken, or might not be. It is what it is you buy an nft it will allow you to copy trade a trading strategy and then you know how it works so again uh and i think the nft you'd have to buy with caf so you get the point right so all of these revolve around the native asset where it drives demand if you use this product and by driving more demand than supply then the caf value should appreciate over time of course there will always be people pull back Whenever a project launches, for example, at the beginning, you're going to have a run up or let's say a product of CAF launching at the beginning, you're going to have a run up and then it will pull back down, so on and so forth. So only so keep in mind that as long as the team is working and as long as there's demand, things should be fine. All right. 
I want before I end the video right now I just want to reiterate by the way this is the white paper you can see most of the things I just discussed whatever has launched will be launching you will see it for example the Cairo Bank you will see coming soon so again as long as these people are working should be fine last thing i want to say and i always keep repeating myself in regards to the high risk part please exercise with caution those are games all right those are dgen decentralized applications at the end of the day you most probably will lose your money but there's a chance that you might end up on the winning side but because this is a native asset with an lp token you will still get it but the value is not so sure all right so it, if it trades sideways it's great so I hope you got some value with everything I shared in regards to Cairo Finance. As usual, no referral links. But I really hope you stuck around till the end. See you in the next one. Have a good one.